Heated discussion continues over the fallout from the ruling of the Director of Public Prosecutions that charges can't be brought against developers Mark and Annette Francis Barnett under the Natural Resources Conservation Act in relation to breaches of a building permit for their development at 11 Charlemont Drive. Now, that's because the time allowed under law for prosecution has run out. The now infamous development was approved for 12 one-bedroom units, but developed as six two-bedroom and six three-bedroom apartments instead. The DPP did say charges can still be brought under the Building Act, but those would have to be led by the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. The same entity that inspected the development and said it was compliant with building plans when it clearly was not. So what No, We'll try to figure that out on this edition of All Angles. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dion Jackson Miller. We're going to be hearing from a little later in the program, Daniel Archer of National Integrity Action, architect and historic preservationist, Dr. Patricia Green, and opposition spokesperson, Senator Sophia Fraser Bins. First though, I invited the, or I visited rather, the office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, yesterday to hear more about what she had to say. There's been a lot of talk about what's happening in this case, um, DPP, but it really points to wider legal and regulatory issues. And some mm -hmm. of those came out in your ruling. So tell me for you, first of all, about the deficiencies that you've clearly identified in the laws. Well, first of all, I don't believe that there are really deficiencies in the laws. What really stands out to us as career prosecutors perhaps at the risk of being cynical, is the will to make sure that once a regulatory breach is identified, that there is a transparent, accountable process that will move the matter once it is appropriate so to do to prosecution for these breaches in a timely manner. That to me is what really stood out to us. It is not the laws. Unfortunately, in Jamaica, a lot of people, the first thing they say, oh, the laws are not sufficient. The Building Act is quite comprehensive. And it would seem to me that the NRCA, for the type of breach that was identified, is quite comprehensive. The issue is how to move it from a recognition of the breaches administratively to a position where immediately you are going to have prosecution. But tell me your thoughts on this issue of the prosecution. And I know you raise that as an issue. And I ask because when you look at the chronology of events, when the breach was identified, there seemed to have been... In respect of which agency? Remember, we're dealing Nepo, with my apologies. two agencies. Nepo. Because straight up, remember, each act, the NRCA enables NEPA as the regulatory authority. Correct. So... All right. The prosecution. Speaking about NEPA here, yes. which is the prosecution that was statute barred, meaning that time ran out. Yes. But even when you look at the chronology, when the breach was identified by NEPA, yes. there did not seem to be any intention to prosecute. Instead, there was a communication oh, saying... Oh, counsel, that's very cynical. No, I'm, I'm going based on the, the... I'm quoting based on the communication. After the breach was identified, you're, you say at paragraph 12 that the NEPA inspector noted and recommended, quote, that an amendment is required for changes made to the development, which seems well, so to be the way in which things go. The, the, the developments proceed unrelated to the permit. And, and morph into something else. And if discovered, then the permits are amended, amended. To, to retroactively approve the development. So from a prosecution's point of view, how... How okay is that? How, how, how does that line up with what the law is supposed to be and what the regulatory um, framework is supposed to do? Here, I think you would have to get directly from the authorities at NEPA what their protocols and their modus operandi would be. Because each agency should have some sort of modus operandi that would inform the exercise of their discretion. As you would be aware, Dion, as counsel, a prosecutor, it's not every single matter where there is a breach of the criminal law that you are going to prosecute. But you have a lot of factors that you take into account. And that would be mainly the evidentiary material that is available, 
and the public interest, it would seem to me... And the seriousness of the breach. And the seriousness and the extent of the breach. So I would like to think, I hope, that both NEPA and the municipality, um, in respect of their legal officers, and I think NEPA is run by a board, and they have a CEO, that there should be some sort of protocol that would inform how they exercise their discretion. What are the factors that would cause them to say, okay, based on what we have seen here, it is highly unlikely that we are going to proceed to prosecute. But for transparency and accountability, it would be helpful for the public to understand what informed the making of that decision, why you are going to be going on track A as opposed to track B. Moving from this particular development, which I know has been in the news a lot, to some of the wider issues, then, because we have a systemic issue. We have, in fact, this is an issue affecting us all across the country, the issue of development and approval. Yes. What for you are the, the lessons that come out of this that, that we need to be paying attention to. Well, first of all, I am looking at the accountable, ultimately accountable officers. A lot of people like to say that it's the ministers or the political directorate. To my mind, this sort of issue, which really surrounds governance being balanced with the develop developmental needs within the country, is really the account Ting and accountable officers, the permanent secretaries of the parent ministries who would have to see to sitting down with the agencies to make sure that they craft some sort of um, modus operandi to inform their discretion. It is really a governance issue that we, that is at play here. Although one lords efforts to develop the country in all these different communities, but it is so important that our environment or that the public confidence then be affirmed to make sure that the authorities pay great respect to how our environment can be impacted by these breaches, how it can be prevented by persons having greater respect for the agencies to say, well, listen, it's not a situation where I should just have one set of plans to get the permit and another set of plans in my back pocket because the problem is systemic and we know that the 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 will to prosecute is weak you know from nepo and from the particular municipality because this could be any municipality ksamc it could be manchester it could be saint elizabeth it could be hanover because the building act which is quite comprehensive, gives a wide enforcement regime that is either prosecuting, going to court for the breach, or a fixed penalty um, regime, it gives it only to the local authority. Is so that, it, it's governance issues because that they... really come into play here and how they are properly balanced with the need for ordered development in every locality. Is that something we need to look at? Because the um, citizens rights groups are raising concerns about that, saying if KCMC has fallen down on the job and the law says that it's KCMC that can move the matter forward, surely that's a conflict of interest. On the face of it, it may appear to be so. But if you look in detail at all the provisions of the Building Act, you see, Unfortunately, in the court of public opinion, there's always a Pavlovian reflex action to just be emotive. But you would know, although you wear the hat as a journalist, you would know as counsel, you have to look at the enabling provisions in the law. The KSAC or the municipality would be the particular authority best in the best position to be able to assess what were the buildings? What was the extent of the breach? Okay. If the breach, yes, it was extended. What is the impact on the particular locality? They look at their engineer. Can we, can the locality accommodate this breach? Or is it a situation that because of the extent of the breach, we would have to need move perhaps a demolition or get a court order? But they would be the people on the ground with the expertise. So 
you can't have an outside agency come in to do that because the building act only gives the municipality that power not on not even the dpp would 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 want to usurp that particular function because we are prosecutors although we prosecute cases where we have to rely on expertise of other professionals ultimately given the scheme of the act only the municipality can after examining the whole project the extent of the breach can decide should we take the matter to court for the breaches the court is not an engineer the court may just say okay the plea guilty i'm just going to find 300,000 or 400,000 but the municipality would be on the ground they have the original plans they have the amended permit they look and see exactly what is there they would also be aware that all these units have already been sold so here again you would know that you have what is it persons who bought this without notice that there is anything wrong so you they are now owned by a person so the public interest embraces a lot of different personnel but so it's all some these overriding. I mean, there are so many cases in which the, the DPP yeah. can step into other kinds of matters. And here we have a situation that it seems that the act assumes that the municipal authority is always going to be doing the correct thing. What if it's not? <laughs> Should there be an override position for the DPP? No, but, but the DPP operates under the constitution. Yes, we can step into a prosecution, but there is no prosecution in being. You see the point? There is no prosecution for us to step into. So the administrative authority, which is municipality, they have to make the decision. So what civil society has to do, I think, is make sure that they know what the provision is. Not be too emotive when you are engaging all the municipalities or perhaps the parent ministries to me it is the parent ministries now the permanent secretaries one in local government and i think nepa is whose ministry is that in job creation, economic growth and job creation the permanent secretaries now who really are the administrative heads of the ministry they are the ones now who would have to call the parties together to make sure that what ought to be done administratively in moving them in a timely way to make a decision one way or the other, whether to prosecute or whether to do the fixed penalty regime, that that is in fact done. Okay, we'll go to the break and then when we come back, we'll talk to our guests in studio. Want to hear from you as well. Our WhatsApp line, 3810072. Give us your first name, your general location. Tweet us as well. Our hashtag is TVJ, all angles. We'll soon come.